<laughs> I gotta tell you, Bill, he come from Oxbow or someplace like that in Oklahoma, just so. sit around watching crickets die. So this guy, Bill Russell, one of the great ball players, 38 years old, spitting up as he goes for a grounder. <laughs> it's all over, Bill. Go back to Oxbow and play around with a farmhouse. Thanks, Don. I needed that. <laughs> Good. I'll do the funny stuff. <laughs> Make another remark like that, and you're going to wind up in a Dominion Republic in front of a wall. <laughs> Hello, Bill. How are you? <laughs> Friendly colored guy, but I want you to know this. Col colored guy means great man. Okay, anyway, you. Not never mind. Touch me now, I'll get sick. I'll tell you this though, Bill. You're a marvelous, marvelous ball player. You got out of Pittsburgh just in time. Thank you. Because the steel workers were starting to grin at you. <laughs> you're a wonderful ball player. You play third base terrific. Dave Anderson, the Wonderful filling guy, keeps sitting up in the stands with a rifle, trying to pick you off. <laughs> so I don't think you're going to finish the season, Bill, but I want to wish you a lot of luck. You and Bill Russell can hang up at the actor's home and just sit on the porch going, we were big ones, we were big ones. <laughs> right next to you. <laughs> Again, you touch me. <laughs> it's murder. He thinks he's on a train and he's going to make up my bunk. <laughs> anyway, you're a great guy. <laughs> This is Steve Sachs. Uh, as you all know, Steve has a problem. <laughs> He's been smiling at a lot of guys in the locker room. <laughs> anyway, Steve, we know your problems, but you're a wonderful youngster. He's the only guy when I first met him said, want to see my bubble gum? <laughs> anyway, uh, Bill, uh, Steve, uh, I didn't even, I forgot yeah. your name already. Steve, oh, I, Steve. I, I, shut up, I'll tell you what I want. <laughs> Still locked yourself in the bathroom with the radio on loud? <laughs> He's a marvelous kid. <laughs> Sits around in the dugout playing with his jock on the wall. <laughs> He's a great kid. I wish you another big year. Finish Thank the you. season, and you're going to be back in San Antonio where you belong. <laughs> Just sitting around watching ducks die. God bless. You're okay. Tom, I'm a friend. Keep this up. You should get a massive one by Friday. <laughs> and, <laughs> I've seen a lot of Italians, but this is the best. This man gets up in the morning, his wife puts a cord on his ass and makes him a blimp. <laughs> but I want you to know this, Tom. You're a great manager, and he's my dear friend. He teaches these guys every day where America is. And I want you to know this, Tom. You're making a ton of money, and I like you a lot. <laughs> Oh, oh, he opened his Yeah, how are you, folks? Welcome to the show Thursday. Don't forget, we got another show tomorrow because I didn't do it on Monday. So uh, a big one. And Facebook's up uh, finally, and uh, YouTube will be streaming live on both of those. Hey, can we can we play the first guy that we missed? That'd be a problem. Okay, fellas. The problem with this team is we've been too serious. Now we're going to have to do something different. So I decided to get this club loose. I'm going to hire an entertainment coach. Just to get him arrested the today. The I've hired is going to make you guys relax. Here's our new entertainment coach, Don Rickles. <laughs> it's all in a jog. Uh, Tubbs, would you get down here? Tubbs. Amigo, sagrado aire, sayé, casam, masaya madera. Which means I definitely feel, Pedro, you should go back to your homeland and become a general. <laughs> now, Pedro, I know you a lot of years, and I watched you play. You're a great ball player. Problem is, the wife don't buy it. When I met the wife, you got a lot of money. But how long are you going to make the woman clean hotel rooms? <laughs> you got to let her get out in the ballpark. You got to live and enjoy a little bit. You know what I mean, Pedro? You're a good amigo. How old are you now? 29. 29. He's in this country 38 years, he's still talking Spanish. I want you to know 29. something. Huh? I'm 29. 29, good, 29. You just won the lottery. You won two weeks in Acapulco. <laughs> but you're a good man, and have another great year. Finish the season. <laughs> Isn't this fun, huh? Wait to see the money we pay you. Okay, no. that's good. <laughs> Why? Why am I showing that? Well, because, you know, if Media Matters had their way, that uh, they'd dig up Rickles and have him arrested. And Tommy Lasorda, who's still alive, believe it or not, uh, he'd be in deep shit too. But that's when the world could be funny. 
And when humorless fucks like Media Matters uh, didn't exist, or anybody on the left for that matter, um, you know, we're off a group think. Yay, no creativity. See, that, that clip I just showed you, that had racism in it. It had, uh, he made gay jokes. Just think about how far we've regressed. Unbelievable, isn't it? We'd be living in a sterile world. Nobody poking fun at anybody. I showed it because also because I had did an interview about Patrice O'Neill. Bennington's putting together like a documentary on him or whatever. And, uh, you know, that was the first thing. Well, why did you guys get along? Because I let him know I didn't care for his people and he didn't care for mine. Of course, we're sort of generalizing there. But, uh, uh, you know, we, we fucking just went tooth and nail when it came to race and gay jokes and, and uh, we could let it fly. And uh, that's not the world we're living in today. And I would love if Patrice was alive to uh, to get his view. Not so much on the race shit, because let's face it, he didn't like whitey. And uh, we have a lot of that today. The, the white male, anti-white male sentiment is, you know, ubiquitous today. But he, uh, I would, would love to hear his views on hashtag me too. Because when it came to um, men and women and relationship shit, he was uh, down and dirty Patrice. And he was like, he was like a black doctor... Phil McGraw or something. He was a fucking genius. But I, it just dawned to me, all that stuff, between the Patrice interview and, and the Rickles clip and, and all the shit uh, that you could get in trouble for. And it all stemmed from watching the last couple nights of news when uh, Media Matters went after Tucker Carlson. We talked about it yesterday. Um, a real crying shame. But uh, this is from, I'm going to read you something. You know, Bubba the Love Sponge, I've done a show a few times. He was like the Howard Stern of the South and uh, a real, you know, a real alpha male fucking crazy dude. But he wrote a very eloquent article defending uh, Tucker Carlson because Tucker getting all kinds of hot water because of, a, a you know, an appearance he made on, on Bubba's show 10 years ago. But I, I just want to read some of this to you. And I thought he friggin' nailed it. He compares him to Lenny Bruce as far as his, his right to say what he wants to say being suppressed. But, uh, you know, he's Tucker's not a, a comic. He should have said that about me. Uh, I'm the one getting punched in the face or getting fired and shit. But uh, but let me just read some of this because I thought it, I thought it was pretty eloquent. He says, uh, he's talking about himself, Bubba. I host a comedy-driven radio show for guys. Until Sunday, no one confused it with something that should be taken seriously. Given my on-air name, Bubba the Love Sponge, I assume most people get the joke. We are rude, sometimes profane. Tucker Carlson called into my radio show regularly from 2006 to 2011, and like all my guests, he adopted an edgy comic persona for the broadcast. He said really naughty things to make my audience laugh, and they did. The hundred or so, I, didn't, I don't believe this. The hundred or so shows we made with Mr. Carlson weren't a secret. I didn't know that. And you can reveal a lot about yourself and 100 radio appearances. And uh, I don't have a problem. Yeah, they were joking around and you take on a comic persona, but even jokes come from a kernel of truth in what you believe. Otherwise, they stink as jokes. So um, uh, so he so he explains a comedy breaks taboo subjects. He says, well, this is so true, um, that release the unspoken into the air in ways that I dare say are funny. And I always argue that. That's why I was com comedy's even better than music as far as an art form. Talking about touchy shit. Because you're allowed to go there. That's your duty as a stand-up comic is to go where place, places where people are afraid to go. People, Especially today when people work in offices and shit and, and human resources calls you and if you look at a girl wrong, whatever. I have people after the shows come up to me and say, I would love to say what you say where I work. Um... So it's a, it's a salient point. To be sure, we say really mean things in my radio show, and we laugh instead of getting mad. Bingo. Why do we allow things to be said in comedy that wouldn't be acceptable elsewhere? Believe it or not, scientists have studied comedy for an answer, and they found one. Listen to this. I had never heard of this. It's called benign violation, which I thought was like finger popping a girl without her permission. Although that's a felony day. Uh, we laugh when social norms are exceeded, uh, the violation. But it's not permanently harmful. It's benign. No one called into my show authentically outraged about what Mr. Carlson said. Not once. Because everyone knew we were goofing in the spirit of the show. Mr. Carlson is being smeared by a new generation of fuckfaces, no, of uh, speech police for a new crime. You know, the Judd Apatow's of the world. 
the, the Sarah Silvermans, anybody on the left, the Kathy Griffins, the view are uh, refusing to give in to a small group of political activists who love all forms of diversity, in quotes, except of political thought. They take his comic words of a decade ago, reframe them as hateful, and require adherence to their demands. They attack their advertisers that simply want a chance to sell things to his audience and threaten them with reputational destruction by public shaming unless they repudiate him. In the, that's called fascism. That's all it is. In the marketplace of ideas, these guys are shoplifters. Well put. This is not only unfair, but it makes the world a sadder and angrier place. See Twitter or any social media. It's a violation. There is nothing benign about falsely calling a good man a misogynist or a racist to force your, politi your politics on the half of the American public that rejects them. I thought was was, was uh, so well right put by Bubba the Love Sponge. And uh, uh, we have, uh, Tucker went after Media Matters last night on his show. Uh, Tucker Carlson uh, went on the offensive against Media Matters for, uh, for America. Media Matters for America, President. First of all, half America doesn't buy a shit, but the president of Media Matters, Angela Carason, who Carlson labeled an in enthusiastic bigot for once running what he called a racist blog. Carlson had been under fire after Media Matters unearthed remarks uh, he made while calling to Bub the lunch sponge, going back more than a decade. Carlson first criticized MSNBC's Chris Hayes, who recently had Carlson on his show. Uh, his video last night of Tucker going after the, by the way, I had a radio show on K-Rock in 10, 2007. I wasn't on there a couple weeks and Media Matters came after me and I wore it like a badge of honor. Uh, I wasn't even on there a couple weeks, I don't think. Guy actually called in and shit. Uh, so I must have been doing something right. It was mentioned in the New York Times. I was a shock jock. I fucking hate that term, number one. I love how people are shocked by something. Now I'm labeled a shock. Meanwhile, if I said that joke to eight of my comedian friends, they wouldn't even blink, or even my friends, but they're shocked by it with their fake, phony, fucking sanctimonious outrage. But here's Tucker last night tucking it to the uh, to this asshole that runs Media Matters. Carasone is himself an enthusiastic bigot. We know this for sure because he has written about it extensively. It turns out that for years, Carasone maintained a racist blog. One post entitled, quote, Trainee Paradise, addressed a crime story from Thailand. A Bangladeshi man had been robbed and assaulted by a group of male prostitutes dressed as women. Karasone objected to the idea that this was even a story and ridiculed South Asians as inherently ugly and poor. Quote, is the writer a trainee lover too? Or perhaps he's just trying to justify how these trannies trick this Bangladeshi in the first place. Look, man, we don't need to know whether or not they were attractive. The effing guy was Bangladeshi. What the hell was he doing with $7,300 worth of stuff? The guy's Bangladeshi. End quote. In another post, Karasone described how a male coach at a Japanese high school had sexually abused female players. People in Japan were horrified by this, understandably. Carousel was not. His advice, quote, lighten up, Japs. Later that month, <clears throat> Carousel, by now in a frenzy of racism, heaped praise on a former Ku Klux Klan leader. In still another post from the same period, Carousel described a Jewish man as being handsome, quote, despite his Jewry. Carousel didn't like the man's political views, but attributed them to, quote, his possession of several bags of Jewish gold, end quote. Jewish gold. According to Angela Carason, Jewish gold is a problem. Media Matters probably ought to issue a press release about this. They've done a lot more for a lot less. And yet somehow, and this is the remarkable part, Chris Hayes managed to pretend that none of this ever happened. Hayes never mentioned the Jewish gold. He never said a word about the Japs or the trannies or the Klan or even those dirty Bangladeshis who deserve what they get no matter what the tranny lovers say. None of that. Instead, Hayes gave cover to Carasone's bigotry and anti-Semitism. Amazingly, he even directed his viewers to Carasone's website. Angela Carasone, of course, all that uh, can be found at Media Matters website, so you can listen to the full clips, get the full context. Oh, right. Pretty well, amazing. Get the full context. 
See? And, and Chris Hayes and everybody at MSNBC. Just watch these people. I can't even, I get sick to my stomach when they sit around judging other people. Like they fucking have never uttered a racist word or any kind of slur. Holier than thou, fucking sanctimonious, pompous jerk-offs to the bitter end. Carousel looks like a fag. What's that got to do? A lot. He's a victim. Yeah, I said it. You know, I know that Brian Stelter, who, if he's not a big girl, I am, had him on the show so Carousel could explain himself. Carousel's excuse was that he was doing a blowhard character, a right-wing, over-the-top person. That was his excuse for his blog remarks. Even if that was true, oh, so when you do it, it's joking around him. But when Tucker's on a show called Bubba the Love Sponge, he's dead fucking serious. He's the same guy he is on the show. You people are fucking disgusting. Disgusting. And the best point that Bubba made in that article is you're taking the fun out of life. You're angry, sad, humorless people. It used to be just the feminists. Now it's the fucking guys. If they didn't have that, look, look at him. Ryan, come on, you'd sleep with him and he'd sleep with you. Am I right? Got a sharp jaw. I'm impressed. <laughs> so does Rosie O'Donnell. Well, she had one. So she put on 70 pounds. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I want to look into his background. Good for you, Tucker. Tucker for president, okay? They'll never come on his show. Why doesn't Stelta you, come on Tucker's show? Debate him one-on-one. -on -one. You'll get eaten a fucking live, which you'd love, by the way. It was from the back. Nick, why do you throw shit in like that? Because it's fun and it bothers people. 833 Five nine nine Nick eight three three five nine nine six four two five, and uh, good for you, Tucker. He's not going to bow to these ass. By the way, who had the highest ratings in cable news last night? One uh, Tucker Carlson. I've met him on, on, on Gutfeld show a few times, and uh, he's a regular guy, a smart guy, and a smart white guy with blue eyes. So he must be evil. But uh, good for Bubba the Love Sponge. Some other little fun facts um, about Angela Carasone. Uh Like I said, Stelta defended the mob coming after uh, Tucker. And then you got, don't forget, Media Matters is funded by who? The biggest evil one of them all, fucking George Soros, billionaire scumbag, who's literally, <laughs> who's literally bankrupted nations when he plays with his stocks and shit. Um, Media Matters has connections to the highest levels of the Obama White House. That was in the Atlantic, for Christ's sake. So uh, I'm glad he's not fucking laying down. Everybody should take a lesson uh, from Tucker. And uh, we're at a point, folks. It's come to a head. I gotta, It's got to break one way or the other. I can't imagine, and it scares me that millennials, this is the poll that freaks me out, 40% of them, you know, don't have a problem with controlling speech. So that's what makes me worry about our future. It's the only thing that separates us from all the other shitholes. Don't you love it? Even if you love or hate Trump, if you hate Trump, don't you love the fact that you could go up to him and go, hey, Mr. President, go fuck yourself. I think you're an asshole. And then walk away. Don't ever take that for granted. I wanted to do that. I never ran into Obama, though. I don't hang around the fucking uh, bathhouses in San Francisco. La, da, 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 la, da, da, da. Did I mention we're coming at you live? Of course I did. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Fuck it. Here's the guy we'll they do got. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. Right. Fucking thing sucks. I didn't put it together, Bill. What are you yelling at me for, motherfucker? You know you want crazy motherfucking wop. Man. No, I don't. I'm just getting pissed. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not gonna take this anymore. Ah, yeah, so anything George Soros touches is uh, polluted. They got to O'Reilly, but they ain't going to get to Tucker, not with those numbers. Why don't you come on and debate them, any of you who hate Fox News? Again, Pelosi, you have an open door. Schumer, any of you. AOC would probably go on because she's a media savvy little broad. Actually, give her credit, but she would get eaten alive as most people do that come on a show. <laughs> no, he's good. You're right. Uh, 
He got Jason got a nice haircut. I noticed. Looks very handsome today. We'll have to get him on camera. Get Jay. Look at that haircut. You look like his doctor. Now you're looking like a young girl, Ryan. It's kind of creepy. Holy shit. All right, get that out of there. Uh, and other big news. Um, come on, Jason, get a name out of him. What do you say, pal? Uh, I'll be on to the next story, and then it's irrelevant. Uh, Beto O'Rourke. Kennedy from uh, Fox News Channel calls him Beta O'Dork, which is cute. Beta is, I wish I thought of that. He's running for president. And in the headline, it says, like Obama, he has sought the middle ground on policy while his Democrat rivals have veered to the left. Really? He's considered moderate? He's the one who said, we'll tear down the wall that separates El Paso from a crime-ridden Mexican city. We'll tear it down because fucking walls hurt people and don't help them. I'm paraphrasing. He said that, but that's considered moderate. He's down the middle, actually, at least as far as the Democrats going. So um, he's he's trying to find the middle ground, which they all do before they fucking, but I think he's full of shit, don't you? <laughs> he's lying. Yeah, he sure in hell is. Um, we have a, uh, we have a uh, clip of uh, Beto, I like, I'm gonna call him Beta now, thank you, Kennedy, but uh, <laughs> Beta O'Dork announcing, you know, with his, his wife is a prop by his side. Uh, I guess he did it on some morning show that I would not be dead caught watching, but here he is announcing, I'm thrilled. Amy and I are happy to share with you that I'm running to serve you as the next president of the United States Pause. of America. If you were a real man, the wife would be behind, behind the couch making you a BLT while you're making this announcement. And then you'd be <laughs> vacuuming, ironing your shirts. That's how you get votes. Ask Trump. Not with your fucking wife hanging on to you. Uh, I want to ask her, is that what you want? And I mean, look at his neck. He's got a neck like Steve Brogan, a fucking Dorothy Hamill. Um, God, I just want to. Uh, go ahead. This is a defining moment of truth for this country and for every single one of us. Pause. The challenge. I love this angle, the arrogance of these. It's a defining moment for the future of this country. Me announcing that I'm going to jump in. It's a defining moment that the Democrats win this. Because otherwise, that economy that's fucking busting all records, the stock market that's busting all, the record low unemployment, all that is going to continue. So this is a defining moment, not to mention we crushed ISIS. So if I don't jump in with my left-wing goo-gobbling friends... This country is at a crossroads. Go ahead. The that we face right now, the interconnected crises in our economy, our democracy, and our climate have never been greater. And they will either consume us or they will afford us the greatest opportunity to unleash the genius of the United States of America. In other words, this moment of peril produces perhaps the greatest moment of promise for this country Pause. and for what peril? Sell that fear, you fucking fear-mongering piece of shit. What peril? I've never made more fucking money. Well, relatively speaking. What what peril are you talking about? Unemployment is record lows. We're trying to stop the third world shitholes from pouring over the border. You're not going to do that. You're going to tear the walls down because you said they harm people. What, what peril are you talking about? Haven't heard from ISIS in fucking a year since Trump got in office. What? Oh, the climate. That's right. You know, I know climate change. Again, I believe it's changing, but it's not the urgency. We're not going to. I saw um, when I was down in Boca Raton, I saw like three redheads at the beach and none of them was smoking. They were healthy. There was no flames coming off their tits. You're a big girl. Go ahead. Everyone inside of it. We can begin by fixing our democracy and ensuring that our government works for everyone and not just for corporations. Pause. Fix our democracy by getting more socialistic. That's how we fix it. Healthcare, Medicare for all. Ba, ba, ba. That's how we fix it. Let people pour in, overwhelm the system. And by the way, that's the plan of the Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, is you let a bunch of poor people in, you have a wealth, you, you can't, I don't know who said it, somebody very smart, and, and they said it years ago, you can't have open borders and a welfare state. They fucking, they don't work together. People pour in and overwhelm the system, which is what we're doing. 
And it'll only get worse under you tearing down walls. Look at her. She wants to give him a fucking hand job right there. Ryan just raised his eyebrows and sent a chill up my ass. Okay, back to the jerk off. We can invest in the dignity of those who work and those who seek to work. We can ensure that every single American can see a doctor and be well enough to live to their full potential. And all of us, wherever you live, can acknowledge that if immigration is a problem, it's the best possible problem for this country to have. And we should ensure that there are lawful paths to work, to be with family. Pause. If the immigration problem is the only problem, it's the best problem we can have. Tell that to uh, the Steinle family, whose daughter was shot off a pier. Tell that to the over 1,000 people who have lost loved ones to illegals in this country. Why don't you repeat that again, giraffe neck, fucking horse tooth bucking ducking. What? That was German. I don't know what the fuck I was <laughs> But uh, is it me? Or everything flying out of his mouth is like pigeon shit. All these bumper sticker talking points unleash America's greatness by, uh, go ahead. And to flee persecution. We can listen to and lift up rural America. We can work on real justice reform and confront the hard truths of slavery and segregation. Ah! Pause. And these are progressive ideas. This is their idea of more. We're going back to talking about slavery. I would take that as reparations. By the way, she's holding his left arm because he's flapping his right one like a wounded duck. Nobody, I'm Italian, nobody talks more with the hands than this fucking guy. You ever watch him? Turn the sound down. It's like watching a fucking uh, a karate lesson. Fucking Taibo. She's holding that arm down. She's biting her tongue right now. We'll show other clips. It's unbelievable. He's like a karate expert. Oh, this is the, what they're all excited about. I, Trump has to be sitting right now with his penis in his hand going, oh my God, it could be this jerk off who I would crush like a butterfly. It could be, um, who else is running? I, there's so many of them. Joe Biden, a guy in his late hundreds, who's lost three times. Who else, Jace? Kamala Harris, I believe. Kamala Harris, who is for anything that's fucking anti-white male. Uh, these are people of far left. He's considered moderate in the Democrat party. I'll read a few statistics, but go ahead. Let, let, let the jerk off cut his own throat. In, in suppression in these United States of America, we can reassert our global leadership and end these decades long wars and be there for every woman and man who has served in them. And perhaps most importantly of all, because I'm very- You're gonna be there for every man and woman who has served them. This is coming out of a Democrat's mouth. Think about when Trump took over from Obama, the mess the veterans were in. Think, you don't give a flying fuck. Because if you did, you talk to those people that put their necks on the line every day in your hometown of El Paso, working the border, who want more security, who want a wall. But you pretend you give a shit about them. Ugh. Look at her. She's even going... That, you're, maybe this guy is nuts. What did I do? Go ahead. Existence depends on it. We can unleash the ingenuity and creativity of millions of Americans who want to ensure that we squarely confront the challenge of climate change before it's too late. This is going to be a positive campaign that seeks to bring out the very best- Pause. You just mentioned 11 negatives, but this is gonna be a positive campaign. If if the next person farts, we're going to die of climate change, according to you. But this is going to be a positive camp. We're at the crossroads. This country's at a crossroads. But this is going to be, he just listed eight things filled with fear, but it's going to be a positive. Nobody's more positive than Trump, even when he's full of shit. Everything's great. The man, I just, remarkable people. He could meet Hitler and go, nice guy, like with Kim Jong-un, nice guy, get along pretty well with him. Uh, buh, buh. <laughs> Trump's too positive for me. This guy just listed 19 things that's wrong with the country and why we're going to die in 10 minutes. But it's going to be a positive campaign. Every single one of us that seeks to unite a very divided country. We saw the power of this in Texas, where people allowed no difference, however great or however small, to stand between them and divide us, whether it was religion or gender or income or geography, 
We put our labels and our differences aside to come together for the only thing that matters, the future of Power. this country and the generations that will follow us. Over the coming days, I'm going to travel this country and listen to those who I seek to serve, to understand from your perspective. Pause. You're going to travel the country? I hope you hitchhiking. You're on a bike, because if I see you in a fossil-burning vehicle, I will call you out. You liar. Let's watch them fly all over the country, spewing fucking CO2. And his, it won't be a private plane. He's not that stupid. Look at her. She fell asleep. Go ahead how we can best meet these challenges. She's on smirking. March 30th, I will be back here in El Paso, Texas, and I invite you to join us in a kickoff for this campaign. But even if you cannot be here on March 30th, I still want your help organizing where you live. I'll help Bringing you. in friends and family and neighbors to the greatest grassroots campaign this country has ever seen. Bernie's laughing his balls off. There's a off. lot more to come, but I want to leave gonna you She's going to jerk him off right this. now. The only way... For us to live up to the promise of America. We already have to give it our all and to give it for all of us. We are truly now, more than ever, the last great hope of Earth. At this moment <laughs> of maximum peril and maximum potential, let's show ourselves and those who will <laughs> succeed us in this great He's country lying. just who we are and what we can do. Thank you. Oh, go fuck yourself. Peril. Economy's never been better. Oh, we're at a peril. Remember, what's the, what's the year? What are we at? Uh, 2019. So in 2031, we should all be dead if he doesn't get elected or Ocasio-Cortez. No, that's not exaggerating. She said the world will fucking end in 12 years. <laughs> Jason, who suffers from a tad of depression, just pumped his fist eight times and... <laughs> Well, I mean, this generation kind of sucks. So if they're the ones who have to bear the bra, I don't care. Fuck them. You're not bearing anything. That's true. We're all going to be gone. No, we're not. That's the fucking funny part. Because if you listen to Al Gore, he was singing the same tune. Miami was supposed to be 10 feet underwater two years ago, according to Al Gore. The guy that founded Greenpeace, hardly a right-wing organization, says the whole climate change thing's a bunch of shit. There's always been climate. There's always been weather. It's always changed. It's about the carbon tax and all that. So the fucking the world can can fucking suck the U.S. taxpayers dry. That's what it's about. Ryan knows that. He's actually quit smoking weed because he's putting a hole, not in the environment, but his mother's curtains. I've actually also start, stopped farting because I have made a one-ton CO2 No, you cloud. stopped farting because I grabbed you by the neck one day. He said, if you shit again in my house, I am going to fucking turn you to dust. It's like, it was like having a guy with a colostomy bag with a hole in it hanging up. I thought I had a piece of shit on my under lip, my upper lip for the first fucking 10 days I met Ryan. It's like pig pen. That's because I had swamp ass over the summer. All right, take it easy, girly. He says, I'm a capitalist. This is Beto. I don't see how we're able to meet any of the fundamental challenges that we have as a country without in part harnessing the power of the market. He's <laughs> such a dink. Um, in terms of the primary, it's signaled that O'Rourke intends to fashion himself as a sort of anti-Sanders. So what are you saying, anti-Semitic? A champion for capitalism. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? An anti Okay. Albeit a much more tightly regulated version than the one espoused by the Trump administration. Do you understand the economy was never more regulated than under Obama. He laid on thousands and thousands of regulations which stifled the economy. Trump came in, lifted them all off, and every business owner, every small business owner in this country would tell you that's what did it. Lifting all those regulations. My water's still clean. There's no ducks falling out of the fucking sky. This guy's going to make it more regulated than Trump. That's the very reason the economy is booming. And nobody's dying unless you live in Flint and you turn on the faucet and fucking dog doo-doo falls into your glass. But who cares about those people? They grew up in a shithole. Might as well be Haiti. What? How can you say such a thing? Well, I'm just doing a right-wing blowhard uh, character. Fucking Carasone. Angelo. Isn't that an Italian name? You'll be disgusted with yourself. You and Brian Stelta ought to get a room and bang each other till you faint. Couple of big girls. Uh, 
What else did Stick Figure have to say? Uh, O'Rourke's firsthand experience representing a border district in Congress for six years and his intimate familiarity, familiarity with issues facing immigrant communities will set him apart from people like Warren, who hails from Massachusetts, and Sanders, who represents Vermont. What, do you think it's easy living next to Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine? Those borders are fucking... Uh, O'Rourke has yet to pair his natural political advantage on immigration with a fully formed policy because he doesn't have one. Uh, that goes beyond the standard Democrat talking points of comprehensive immigration reform and a path to citizenship for undocumented blah, 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 and uh, we got a video, December video posted. Uh, this is shows O'Rourke um, spelling out his opposition to Trump's border wall. And this was viewed 5.5 million times. And it's the, I think it's the one, I hope it's the one that I told you guys to pull up. It's what's going to sink him because it's the silliest shit I've ever heard. But go ahead. We know that walls do not save lives. Walls end lives. In the last Let's hope you hit 10 one years, in your car. more than 4,000 children, women, Look at his hand and men have died trying to come to this country to work jobs that Thank no God. one will take to be with a family. Who said that? Who the fuck said that? Who's the slimy little communist shit twinkle toed cocksucker down here who just signed his own death warrant? That's Beta O'Rourke. That's who. He actually said, I didn't pull up this clip because I'm so tired. He was going to tear down the, he would tear down the wall. I think Chris Hayes, the jerk off who was jerking off Carousel the Media Matters guy, actually asked him, would you tear down the wall right now? It might have been another guy. It doesn't matter. They're all the same. Would you tear down the wall separating El Paso from, you know, Mexico right across the border where it's loaded with, there was like 3,000 murders that year as opposed to 23 in El Paso. And he goes, yes, I, w I, w I do it today. <laughs> Do you understand by the time this race gets started, how many more illegals are going to be trying to get in and shit? Do you understand that? Do you understand? And unless Trump, I, what happened to the military at the border, by the way? Remember he was going to deploy the whatever the fuck? Bring them back. Get a bunch of NFL players who got uh, kicked out of league for drugs and violence. Get them on the border. Give them something to do. Let's go to uh, Kurt in Fort Worth. Kurt, I... <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. I hear you're a big yeah, fan yeah, of yeah. Uh, Beto. Me, me, me think him, me think him wounded duck with buck teeth, not right in head. <laughs> he's got a lot of hand movement. I've never seen so much hand movement. I said, is he crazy or is it? Me <laughs> think him he crazy like presidents say. <laughs> me think him he need to stay away from fire water. Yes, um, I agree him. This guy's an idiot. Your thoughts? He's a young woman now. He's coming up. He's coming up. He's rising. Soon he'll be a woman. A woman for all of us. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kurt. That was fucking... I like calls like that. You got his message. Did you hear Trump in the background talking about his hand movements? I didn't even know the president... He does. He has the energy, his hand gestures uh, of Dane Cook on stage. Which is fine for comedy. I'm not taking a shot at Dane. I'm just saying. That's what uh, Beto O'Rourke looks like a nervous open micer. Jumping around on the balls of his feet. At least Obama, you know, he could feign a good speech. Did you just make a face right over you yawning? He's fucking, Ryan's yawning. Sorry. I've been so sick, I haven't been getting any sleep. Me either. But what are you sick? What, what, what do you got? My eardrums are pounding. I don't know why they hurt. Your eardrums are pounding? Yeah, my eardrums, I got like uh Were you at that Covington High School uh, rally? Yeah, no, it was so loud, I just... You have that Indian fucking banging those drums in you? It's banging more than drums, man. Oh, that's dirtiness. I can't handle that. 
Hey, don't forget Cameo.com, folks. What's Cameo.com? It's when I, uh, you call me, you, you text me or whatever. Go to Cameo.com, click on my profile, and I will send a quick video to an enemy, a friend of yours, a neighbor, a relative, your old girlfriend, a new girlfriend, a fat girlfriend, a fat boyfriend with a small dick, a balding boss, a stupid dog, your shitty neighbor. I will rip them a new one. I will rip them a new one. It's I, I had two of them this morning when I got up. It actually makes my day. There's very few things I enjoy in this business anymore. But talking into a phone for a few seconds makes my day. It lets me unleash. And uh, Cameo.com, click on it. I can ruin the day. I can make the day. I can be nice. I can say happy birthday to somebody. Or, uh, you know, uh, shalom. Or fucking happy pie day. Today's pie day. National pie day. So... That's true. Cameo.com. Do it. I need the money. You think I can afford these ties? This looks like I got it at a yard sale at Tom Brokaw's house. Oh, I got it for... I took the parlor. I was wearing my tie today. <laughs> uh, pie day. There it is. Pie is the ratio. You know, pie is 3.14. I think we've all learned it. It's, a, it's the ratio between the circumference and the fucking... Uh, What's the other thing? Not the circumference, but the diameter, right? I don't know. I failed math. I don't know. I, 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 same thing. I, I just found that out today. I fucking never understood what pi was, you know, other than looking at Rosie or fucking Sherry Something Shepherd. To do with radians and shit like that. Radians? Circles. Why don't yeah. you get, 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 get back in the doghouse, will you? Two pi R over five or some shit. Yeah, you're over. You're over Boy Scout's face with your tea bag. I fucking love Ryan. I love him like this. Ugh, how does that feel, you motherless fuck? <laughs> Meanwhile, Jason's in the background. He looks like a young fucking Marv Albert. Yes. Call in, folks. 833-599-6425. South Florida drivers uh, would trade sex for less traffic. Traffic so bad in South Florida. You think it has anything to do with uh, 11,000 Cubans floating over in tires in the last fucking three weeks? I was in Miami once. I went into a bank. I don't want to say there's a lot of people there from Cuba. I went into, I was waiting in line at a bank, and then the guy in front of me had seaweed in his hair, a couple of lobsters. He had just gotten here, all soaking wet. <sighs> Traffic so bad in South Florida, many commuters say they would give up sex to have an easier drive to and from work. Well, that's just being stupid. How about fucking in the car? He's stuck in traffic. Kill two birds with one rape whistle. What are you thinking? Uh, the new report says 22% of drivers would give up lights out nookie so they didn't have to uh, sit in traffic. I find that a little fucking weird. Don't no, you? They're, they're ignorant. That's ignorant. But that wasn't all. Almost half of South Florida's drivers, 48%, said they'd give up alcohol while 29% said they'd drop Netflix to get rid of the bumper to bumper track. What do you, you can do all this at once. You can fuck and drink and watch Netflix while you're stuck in traffic. Am I wrong? Well, drinking is illegal. Yeah, so sneaking into the country on an inner tube. What are you kidding me? We're living in a country where illegals can vote now. The survey commissioned by Brightline and Lyft says a lot about much of the people in Miami-Dade, how much they hate traffic. They despise it so much. Nearly 30% said they'd get recircumcised with a butter knife in the cold. The, they'd rather clean their office bathroom than sit in a daily commute. Anyways, and another 40% would joyfully sit in the middle seat on an airplane. Now you're getting fucking ridiculous. That's where I'd draw the goddamn line. But do it in the car while you're in traffic. Yeah, that could happen. <laughs> Miami, you got a lot of balls to be complaining. I've lived in Boston, New York City, Los Angeles. You haven't seen trap. You remember I was uh, fucking in uh, California a month ago? Try to go from LA to San Diego, which is literally about a two hour and five minute drive. Took me four and a half hours. 
And I do agree with some of the people that were making comments about this article. Don't tell me it doesn't have a lot to do with illegals. Especially the Mexicans. They love their cars. Each kid gets a Chevy on their fifth birthday. They have to fix it. And But um, come on. We have 25 million illegals in this country that we know of. What do you think? They're all hitchhiking. And Nick, you're just scapegoating. Shut it. Shut it. I go to towns down south sometimes to work and shit. And I I get in the whole, I get, you know, when I have to leave, they pick me up in a car at the hotel to go to the airport. It's rush hour. I'm there in 20 minutes. <clears throat> New York, LaGuardia is 38 miles from me. It takes me about an hour. And then you get there. It's another 12 minutes to get into the garage. It's under construction. I'll give them that much. But holy shit, cut my throat. Drew wants to talk about a Gambino crime boss who was killed last night. Yeah, I, I, I skimmed over that story. I was too wrapped up in Beto and, and Tucker defending his right to be an American. But uh, yes, fucking Staten Island whacking, I believe. Is that what you're talking about, Drew, the guy in Staten Island? Yeah, hey, Nick, I guess it happened at like 9.30 last night. Yes. Uh, Frankie boy Cali got fucking whacked out. <laughs> 52 years old, huh? I know. First guy to get whacked out, they said, in 30 years or something with a Gambino. Well, thing. since, um, yeah, since Gotti whacked out, uh, yeah. what's his name? Big it's Paul, Big Park Paul. Steakhouse, right? Yeah. Big Paul yeah, Castellano. Castellano get whacked right in front of the steakhouse. By the way, that's when you come to New York, if you guys are tourists, that's how we decide which... <laughs> Which places have good Italian food? I go, is anybody whacked within a mile of this place? And they go, yes. And I go, yes, I'll have the veal. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> but yes, I... You, Nick, you know, you, know what, you, you know what else is interesting about it is Gene Gotti just gets out of prison after 32 years in uh, September. And then October, he's, you know, the, the, the Zatola guy gets whacked out in the McDonald's drive through in the Bronx. Yes. And then his son was shot and survived. And... I wonder if Gene Gotti is kind of sending a message out and uh, cleaning shop saying, I got what's coming to me and uh, you guys are out. I didn't even, I, don't re- know. I didn't even, re- I didn't realize Gene, when he, Gene got out this past September or October. Yeah. I yeah. Gotta, for I, 32 years in prison. Good. I need a bookie. I haven't had anybody to bet with all year. I'll call him. And the guy that got whacked in McDonald's, ironically, they said he had a happy meal in his hand when he get fucking took slugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, folks. I'm dipping into hack country, but I went with it anyways. But yes, uh, this yes. So the yeah, f- I got one of your your, uh, your videos too that you sent to my family too. So that was awesome. Which one was that, Drew? We're talking about Cameo, by the way. Which one was that? Yeah, Cameo.com. That uh, was the uh, the Chicago Southside family. And, oh yes, uh, I'm Drew, the uh, law enforcement guy, and they all came out and you ripped the tits off them. That yes, great. that's right, the Irish hooligans. Well, thank you for doing that and spread the word yeah. to your friends. <laughs> I love. I love doing shit. I will. All right. Thanks, Drew. All right. Have a good night, man. All right, brother. Drew, a law enforcement agent. Yes. Somebody got whacked. Uh, Frank Kelly or whatever the fuck. I love those nicknames. My favorite, I think, is Tony the Gas Pipe something. Gas Pipe. How could that be good if your nickname's Gas Pipe? <laughs> you know he didn't work for the town. Maybe he's got a big pipe. Oh, does everything have to be a joke below the waist with you? Yes. Obsessed with men's cocks. Yes, I am. It's one thing for my wife to say, and I laugh, but you, I know you mean it. <laughs> Tony the gas pipe. I don't think so. I think it had not. The mafia's not big on those gay uh, nicknames. Anyways, touch me in the. Oh, look who's back in the fucking news. The lying cocksucker, Jesse Smollett. He's literally a lying cocksucker. I don't mean to be. Uh, but uh, this guy is, uh, he's dead to me. He used to be a good friend. I don't like him anymore. Empire returned with the Jussie Smullett for its mid-season premiere on Wednesday. And fans went wild, that means black people, over his on-screen persona dealing with public drama as the actor in real life faces 16 felony counts. And he won't fucking have to do time for any of them. You can quote me on that. I'm going to say it again. He won't do a goddamn minute. You have to realize, folks, the times we live. This is 2019 in America. And because Jesse's relatives uh, three, 300 years ago really got railroaded, 
There's a lot of people, the uh, the ruling class, the elites, who believe that that means he's going to go free. Mark my words. He'll have to do some fucking psychological whatever the fuck. He'll work at a soup kitchen and maybe, uh, you know what the punishment should be? Like I said, if he went to jail, that's not punishment because he's black and gay. That's a fucking, it's like... They go, it's like going up to somebody after the Super Bowl. You just won the Super Bowl. Where you going? Disney World. It's the same, you know, fucking. So uh, I ain't buying that. But uh, yeah, he faces 16 felony counts for his alleged uh, hate crime hoax. And like I said, he's not going to fucking. I... Fucking quiz. Hey, hey, no talking like that. No talking like that. On the episode, uh, Smella's character, Jamal, had to end his engagement with his fiance kai damn i missed this one couldn't agree with his family's illegal actions eventually jamal's family became involved in some high profile drama which he had to address this is the character talking i don't know if y'all been reading the blogs and uh, all the foolishness this is pretty prescient uh but it's uh, been kind of a tough week jamal said twitter couldn't get enough of the irony oh my god there's people on twitter talking about empire why don't you people just all fucking hang yourselves for real like he faked it you guys should do it for real Lee Daniels is a psychic one fan tweeted before he put a gun in his own mouth and realized he was tweeting about Empire on Twitter. <laughs> uh, however, some viewers are uncomfortable watching Smollett on their TVs, even though the episode had been filmed a while ago. I'm sorry. It's so hard for me to look at Jussie without wanting to slap the shit out of him. Hashtag Empire, a viewer tweeted. That's, uh, that's a little better. I'm fucking smash his fucking face in. I can tell that's a white guy, though, because it's, it says uh, wanting to slap the shit out of him. And if it was a brother, it would have been, I want to slap the shit out of him. That's right. Another guy said, I'm just ready to see them uh, right off, Jamal. Hashtag Empire fan tweeted alongside a gif of a woman giving a glare. Ooh, very clever. Ooh, I think he brings up as much anger in me as Adam Schiff. And that's saying some. And I'd still hang out with Jesse before Adam Schiff. They're both delusional. They both like the taste of fucking salty nuts. And uh, that's all I have to say, Jason. I made a few gay jokes today. You seemed a little discouraged by it, but uh, I understand. Westchest is filled with Ryan's type of people. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm aware. I know you are. You'll never leave here. No, I need to get the hell out of here. You really do. You should go to San Francisco where you can find some real ass. <laughs> I left my britches in San Francisco. Hey, uh, live dates. You can get these at nickdip.com. Friday, March 29th. That's in a couple weekends. Decatur Civic Center, Decatur, Illinois. Saturday, March 30th, the next night at Del Mar Hall in St. Louis. Friday, April 26th, Steel Stacks, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Friday and Saturday, May 3 and 4, Side Splitters in Tampa, Florida. Friday and Saturday, May 10th and 11th, Governors in Levittown, New York. Friday, May 34th, Jonathan's in Agunquit, Maine. Saturday, June 1, Whites of Westport. Westport, Mass. Can't wait to see what that's about. Saturday, August 10th at Newtown Theater, Newtown, Pennsylvania. Friday and Saturday, August 16th and 17th, my balls will be stuck to my legs for at least three days because I'll be in Philadelphia in August at Helium Comedy Club. Uh, here's a new date we changed. Originally, it was Saturday, October 19th. It's now Friday, October 18th, the Ridgefield Playhouse, Ridgefield, Connecticut. Mark that down. It's a tremendous venue. Friday, November 15th, the Cortland Repertory Theater in Cortland, New York, and the New Year's Eve back at the beautiful, the gorgeous Tarrytown Music Hall, Tarrytown, New York. I can't thank my agent slash manager, Tommy, enough for getting me out of those smoky hell holes. Sure, it should have happened 12 years ago, but that's not his fault. Um, and... Uh, playing nice venues and people pay they actually pay real money there's no bachelorette parties there's no two fat broads that look like hillary fighting over a basket of chicken wings it's just good pure comedy <laughs> if you're offended by the c word stay the fuck home if you don't like racial humor kiss my grits Oh, the GOP showing what motherless fucks they are. GOP senators appear ready to block, I repeat, GOP senators appear ready to block Trump border declaration. Declaration. You believe Son this? Son of a whore! The Republican-led Senate is set to... That's because Mitch McConnell 
Uh, he only moves his lower lip when he talks. Uh, we agree with the president on most of them, but, 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 mama, mama. Stephen Hawking had more emotion in his face when he's given speeches than this. The, uh, the Republican-led Senate is set to deal President Donald Trump a rebuke on his declaration of a national emergency at the Mexican border with only the only remaining question, how many GOP senators will join Democrats in defying him? This is like a litmus test for who the fucking rhinos are, who the phony fucks are, okay? I know the reasoning. I'll get into it in a second. Why? Um, it's not just about the wall. Republicans are predicting that Thursday's showdown vote will result in Congress sending Trump a resolution blocking the border emergency he proclaimed last month to steer an extra 3.6 bill to building border barriers. Since the Democratic-controlled House approved the measure last month, the Senate vote would force Trump to use a veto to protect his presidential campaign to build the goddamn wall. Build that wall. Build that wall. Build that wall. Mantra Build that wall. over objections from his own party. When I heard the list of people of, of the GOPs who were porking him in the ass, it didn't surprise me. Senate passage of the resolution was all but ordained Wednesday after the collapse of efforts by the White House and GOP senators to reach compromise on a separate legislation by Senator Mike Lee of Utah, limiting president's powers to declare emergencies in the future. So Mike Lee wanted to pass a separate thing uh, it's sort of like an insurance poly- policy because if Trump gets away with this, declaring this national emergency shit, it's sort of like an executive order thing. When the Dems, if the Dems take the White House, they're going to do it with everything. Climate change is a national emergency. Ba ba ba. I don't have to go to Congress to get the money. I'm going to do it myself. They're trying to prevent that. You see, that's why it's not just about the wall. I sort of understand that. But after what this goddamn guy's gone through, after watching the clips every night of the news, people are climbing over the fence. It looks like Tony Montana's house at the end of Scarface when he has all those cameras and monitors and you can see guys all dressed in black swarming his house. That's what the fucking southern border looks like. Doesn't it? Sure it does. Don't be a dink. Republican lawmakers that hope to deal on that measure would have helped more of them to back Trump's border emergency in Thursday vote. Instead, several Republicans are being boxed into a thorny dilemma, defy Trump and the conservative voters who back him passionately, or assent to what many lawmakers from both parties consider a dubious and dangerous expansion of presidential authority. But I say it's an emergency right now. Do what you got to do. With Republicans controlling the Senate, 53-47, just four, I'll repeat, just four GOP defections will be enough to approve the resolution canceling Trump's border emergency. Okay? Lee became the fifth Republican to say that the um to back the resolution after Trump called him during a private lunch. I guess the call didn't go well uh, to say he opposed Lee's compromise bill. The call was described by two officials who weren't authorized to discuss the matter publicly. What was call me in the room and described it on condition of anonymity. Congress has been giving far too much legislative power to the executive branch. That's what Lee said. He said he'd vote to block Trump's emergency because his own bill does not have an immediate path to uh, forward. Why not? Why didn't you come up with something viable? Mr. Lee, uh, here are the other senators that are porking Trump in the ass on this one. Uh, Thomas Attilis of North Carolina, Susan Collins of Maine. You know who she is, Susan Collins. Well, I was going into my house and I was assaulted by an Antifa man. I can't. I'm sorry. Does that imagine Putin watching? This is leadership, and a you know, lady in her sixties from Maine going, I, "I, I don't like the resolution because of the Democrat." And Lisa Murkowski, so two broads. We shouldn't have given them the vote. I'm telling you, uh, of Alaska and and Kentucky's Rand Paul. Three broads. I'm sorry, three broads. My apology. Fucking people. You have no idea how to defend a nation. But perhaps 15 GOP senators might oppose Trump in Thursday's vote. Jesus, said one Republican who offered the estimate only on condition of anonymity. Nobody can say anything with their face shown. They all might as well fucking head up to Capitol Hill when they go to work in the morning wearing those those Antifa masks. Those white, the guy with the mustache, the French revolutionary jerk off or whoever. 
Uh, Trump told reporters that he advised GOP senators to vote any way you want on the resolution blocking his emergency declaration, but he added a warning, like a pack of cigarettes. Anybody going against border security, drug trafficking, human trafficking, that's a bad vote, he said. Uh, that's kind of a warning. It's kind of a message, all but aimed directly at undecided GOP senators facing re-election races next year, of whom there are several. Nancy Levin Nipples Pelosi, who lost her mind to syphilis when she was in high school, yet continues a politician, uh, tried making it even harder for uncertain Republicans to support Trump's border emergency. She said, I will take a urination on the front lawn of the... She said the House would never even consider the separate bill limiting future declarations by presidents, including Trump. Well said, you yeast infection in heels. May your daughter be run over by the Detroit Pistons in the locker room. Uh, uh, Mark from Albany. Let's close the show with a call from a guy who used to be uh, live under communist rule. Now he lives under his wife's rule. Much worse. Mark, welcome to the show. Yeah, hi, Nick. A great show as usual. Thank you, my friend. Well, what I would like to say, like, uh, um, those senators, they're going to, not they're going to vote against it because it's probably Congress already passed in 1976 during the Gerald Ford, I believe, that uh, he can declare emergency it was approved by Congress so they can suck his dick, pretty much Trump's dick. <laughs> and the senators, they yap, they yap, but they're going to vote anyway to, Trump's going to do what the fuck he wants uh, because he's got the power. Well, yes. In him. And then one more thing. The, okay. But let me just stop. Uh, let me stop. Oh, wanna... Mark. Oh, Mark. Hold on. Okay. So, go ahead. Go ahead. So, I'm sorry. So, so Trump is going to veto, okay, because he's not going to have the votes. He can veto it and do what he wants. But is it not a legitimate concern? Exactly. Is it not a legitimate concern that if the if the Democrats get the White House, eventually they will someday, that they will do the same thing and declare climate change? That's the big fear. They'll call that a national emergency. Well, I, I, I know. I know. Yes, that's correct. Yes, you see the problem with the Senate and Congress. They're all afraid that the next president or so down the road can declare emergency about anything. But uh, let's be honest: we have a real crisis on the fucking border, and it's not a joke. It's you know the the border patrol agency. I mean, that they are showing the numbers for what's going on. We have thirty-one thousand people since uh, beginning of the year crossing illegally the border, which costs. Almost four, five hundred. I mean, half a billion dollars so far this year. No, you're right. To keep those people afloat, you have to feed them. I mean, it's it's cost to taxpayers. I mean, they can yap all the fuck they want, but Trump has the power as a president to declare emergency and build a fucking wall. No, I know. End of the story. They can bitch and moan and cry. Nobody's di- nobody's disputing that. It's just that, like, let's say they fucking lose in 2020, the Republicans, and the next jerk off, like, Nothing they're not going to lose. I, well, <laughs> no, I agree. I'm sort of with you. Well, we just always, uh, you know. But no, let me, let me, let me finish my, let me finish my point. Let me finish my point. Okay, the, go The ahead. Republicans are going to win either way, because let's, let's say they lose, right? And, 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 and uh, Democrats okay. in the White House, and, um, they reverse, you know, they, they loosen immigration laws and they, you know, they want blank and amnesty, whatever the fuck they call it. And millions of illegals are going to pour in. And then the people, the voters are going to go, what the fuck is going on? It, it might be too late by then, but then they'll, they'll vote the Republicans in, in the midterms of whoever in, in 2024. Well, Nick, like, Nick, like you mentioned, we're on the breaking point. Uh, yeah. All those lying Democrats, they're going to be exposed. And eventually, we, 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 this country is going to get back on its track where we're supposed to be going. Right. Freedom of, for everyone. Mind your own fucking business. I'll do my <laughs> shit. You do your shit. We, we're going to be neighbors. And that's it. That's right. I don't need no fucking some politician trying to tell me how to eat and how to shit and how to <laughs> fart. Or how to feel, how to love. I mean, I don't need that shit from fucking. Oh, anybody. I don't know. I think, Lind- I think Lindsey Graham showing you how to love would be actually a lot of, very helpful. Well, <laughs> Nick, Nick, listen, I will, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a breaking point. We just have to take it easy and just, I agree. time will do its killing. All right. All Great right. show, Nick, once again. Thank and you, Mark. Thanks, so, by the way, because of, the, oh, but because of Trump, I got a brand new car. It's such a horrible economy. <laughs> Good for you. Thanks, Mark. Uh, that is it. Love Mark from Albany. He comes out every time I'm up there. Within the, he brings out the whole family and shit. And uh, he lived under communist rule in Poland. He knows what he's talking about. Beto and Alexandria and Bernie. Wake the fuck up and smell the burning zoo animals from Venezuela. 
Uh, that is it for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Patreon members love you. you the, the bread and butter. I appreciate it. Um, anything else, fellas? Am I forgetting everything? Show tomorrow. Uh, you almost did a good job. Ryan jumped and gone. I never said cold opening, and, and then you, but you know, it's all right. Ryan's like, I don't give a shit. Jason told me it was a cold opening. I never said it was a cold opening. I said, we're going to do it first. I didn't say cold opening first. Don't fucking make a face of me. Learn the fucking showbiz lingo, Jason. Uh, okay, I've had enough. I'm going to go uh, take some opioids and uh, that's it. Uh, remember, you guys think it. I'll say it. You're very welcome. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>